Hello there, Geminis. Welcome to your tarot reading. So um, one of the main themes that I am seeing coming through for this month is that um, I feel that you are privy to a lot of, you know, privilege information, a lot of um, personal information, and also just a lot of, um, I'm seeing like, you know, information that you have to be very careful about how you disseminate to the public how you let other people know what you know. So I, I feel like a little bit of, you know, office politics coming into the picture. And um, some of you might be in a field where you are privy to a lot of, um, you know, this is kind of like in the work sector, in the career sector, where you have a lot of uh, disparate information. And you're going to have to figure out which is the true narrative. So sifting through the truth uh, or sifting through the information in order to arrive at the truth, that's going to be one of the major theme. And then once you are able to arrive at the truth, how you are able to, you know, uh, relay that information to your supervisors, to the people working below you, how you are able to use that information and decide on a course of action, that is going to be very, very vital for you. Um, the other thing I'm sensing for uh, some of you is that you're in a uh, field that is very, very technical. And uh, it seems almost as if, you know, um, there could be like many interpretations. So, for example, you look at one uh, situation this way and other people around you are offering their inputs and they're saying, no, it's this way too. And then somebody else is giving you like a different vantage point. So you have a lot of conflicting uh, information and so deciding on you know how you want to communicate that and deciding on which is the true narrative that's going to be majorly important too and the main theme that I am feeling here is you have to really trust your intuition okay uh, trust yourself trust your intuition and trust that you have the critical thinking capabilities to arrive at the best solution or to arrive at the truth or to clearly disseminate, you know, the, the dissect the story that you're hearing, the, dissect the story that you're, it's filtering through. So I, I feel like there are a lot of, um, there's like self-doubt coming through. There's like, um, you know, differing narratives that will come through for this month that will you know, make you reassess the things that you believe in, which is always a good thing. And what you decide to do with that, I feel that it's greatly, um, you might be constrained by your work environment to do something, even though you might not believe 100% in, in its merits. You might be constrained by financial obligations. You know, if you don't do this one project this specific way, the money might not be uh, made available, the funding might not be made available, or you might not be picked for the next project. So I feel like there is a lot of social pressure. There's also a lot of pressure from the um, structure in which you operate, the, the work structure and the environment in which you operate. And then there's also, you know, the, the thing about intuitive knowledge, things that you feel everyone should know this. It's so intuitive. It's so like common sense. And yet you have to explain these things to somebody that might be struggling with these things. They can't really see the big picture. They don't really see how all the pieces fit together in, you know, the greater scheme of things, which is their life. And so things that you feel might be common sense or it's, um, I feel like people that uh, don't see these things that you consider to, to be just commonsensical things. Uh, they're raised in a different environment. And so overcoming um, the communication barriers and to allow yourself to come to a conclusion or to allow yourself to relay information to another person in a way that allows them to see, you know, how everything fits together. That's going to be a major theme for this month. Your communication sector looks very good. And I feel that you are aiming for a lot more harmony and compromise. And I do feel that overall the way that you carry yourself in um all aspects of your life this is you know via, with family members with loved ones with friends even with uh, co-workers and even supervisors the way that you carry yourself is one that indicates to me a lot of diplomacy a lot of just um 
you know, wanting to reach a middle ground, wanting to compromise with another, um, making, setting up, you know, the uh, setting up, I feel like setting up, um, peaceful, peaceful negotiations in order to allow others to compromise with you. I feel like that's what you're setting up when you try to communicate. You, you come into, you know, a situation with an open mind. And I feel that it's the people that you're going to be dealing with that might throw you, that, that might like ask questions you didn't anticipate. They might appro approach it from a different point of view. And so I feel that the work sector, there's going to be um, quite a few things where you're going to have to, you're going to have to repair, you're going to have to fix. Okay, so the people in your external environment, they are bringing quite a bit of problems. And the way that they present the problems, it might be accusatory. It might be, you know, let's play the blame game and see who's responsible. And so the main thing is for you to uh, maintain your cool. Okay, don't fly off the handle. Aim for that middle ground. Aim for that compromise. Aim to say that, okay, I see what you're saying, but on the other hand, you know, aim to be more of that, you know, the, the embody the Libran traits where, you know, you practice diplomacy and you always start a conversation or a sentence with, I see where you're going, but here's where I stand or, or I come in, or here is what my starting point is. And I feel that by doing so, it's going to allow the other party to um, lessen their tactics of antagonism against you because you're starting off the sentence by you know stating that i see where you're coming from but here are the issues that are affecting me and why i'm doing the things that i'm doing so this is not a month for you to you know be the lone wolf just be like forget everybody else i'm going to do it my way this is a, a month for compromise this is a month for downplaying our own personal agendas in order to incorporate the greater narrative and to see how everything can you know um put in be put into place in a gentler manner so that everybody is happy so compromise and things like that those are the the major themes i'm seeing for the month of march um I feel overall there will be a lot of social functions that you're going to be attending, okay? The energy from this Four of Wands, this is the energy that you're bringing to the table. There will be a lot of, um, you know, rubbing elbows um, with other people that might be in positions of power and authority. There will be a lot of sit-down dinners. I feel that, you know, where, um, where you are going to come into contact with, um, you know, clients, where you're going to come into contact with a lot of um, project managers even is what I'm sensing. So there will be a lot of discussions, a lot of talks that are kind of like borderline professional and personal. And all of these things, there needs to be a clear demarcation between, you know, professionalism and uh, how much information, personal information you are revealing. So you, you're straddling this um, very precocious, like um, precarious, um, fine line between you know this is um private information i need to keep that private and this is personal information it's okay to share with this person but not okay with that person so there's a lot of maneuvering i feel going on and it's really important for you here to maintain your cool maintain your temper and keep everything balanced within yourself okay um, I do see a lot of communication coming through that might be on the um, personal front. So people breaching boundaries as well, that's, um, that's something you want to be careful about. If they're steering a, a conversation into the personal realm and you feel that it's not appropriate, you really need to you know, put your foot down and do so in a more diplomatic way, in a firm, but also um, a very diplomatic way, okay? So uh, if they say something that you feel is like, that's too personal, try to um, redirect the conversation, make a joke, and then, you know, steer towards a different topic. And I feel like it is within your reason to, uh, within your rights to do this, something like that. And I do feel that you need to keep your mind focused, keep it very sharp, have a clear objective when you are talking to another person, especially if you are negotiating deals, if you are negotiating work contracts, if you are negotiating as well, you know, 
uh, dealing with clients' portfolios. And if they, if you have to match their demands in a specific way, if you have to cater to them, if you have to accommodate them a specific way, I do feel it's really important for you to um, just uh, maintain a clear objective, okay? Because what I see is a lot of communication happening and a lot of topics will be brought up. A lot of things need to be unraveled. And so I'm seeing a lot of just, you know, people throwing things at you here and there. And you're going to feel a little bit destabilized. So it's really important to, you know, every once in a while, uh, just stop the communication and say, what is the objective here? What are we trying to achieve? Is this just thrown into the mix as a distraction? Or is it some meaningful piece of information that I need to take into account? So every, you know, five minutes or so, just remind yourself, what is the objective? Are we going off track? Are we going off on a tangent? Are we uh, still focused on the same talking point? So I feel it's really important for you to maintain that, um, that sense of like inner, you know, inner Zen to focus on your main objective because people will throw things here uh, left and right as a distraction for you. Okay. Um, I'm also feeling that uh, in your work environment, I feel that some of you are dealing with um, hostile situations. So I, I'm seeing some people um, dealing with clients that might be very emotionally frazzled. Okay, so you might be in an um, in a banking um, industry. You might also be in an investment industry. And I'm, I'm sensing like some people are just, you know, they're, they're kind of like at their wits ends and they don't really know what to do. So they come to you uh, very, very frazzled and they, they have all these issues and they're all interrelated and they want you to help them unravel it. And while you're trying to, you know, make sense of everything, they, they keep talking. And so what it does is that you're a very empathetic, uh, empathetic sign. And I, I do sense that, you know, when people bring that energy of, you know, just very, very emotionally um, destabilizing energy into your life, you tend to also mimic them. So be very careful about that, okay? Maintain your own little bubble and work from that so that other people's energies do not affect you, okay? So it, it's kind of like two people sparking off each other. It can be really good. If it's uh, conducive for, you know, ambition and, and good energy for starting projects. But on the other hand, it can also be very destabilizing if you keep mimicking each other and things don't get done. So I feel like the energy is going to go both ways um, depending on, you know, who you are. And so taking stock every five minutes, every 10 minutes and figuring out, you know, what is my objective? So I feel like the work situation, a lot of things are going to be happening. I'm seeing you sending out a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls that needs to be returned. A lot of people trying to reach you, make sure your phone is constantly charged and make sure that you're not, um, you know, that, that, um, you don't just, um, use your phone, use up the battery and just leave it idle. So, so keep your phone on, um, on you at all times. I'm seeing a lot of, uh, forgetful energy too. So Gemini's be very, very careful, D important documents, make sure, you know, before you go to bed, um, just lay everything out that you need for the next day, just to save yourself the time scrambling around in the morning. So I do feel like a lot of late nights, um, getting things done at the last minute too. You know, not that you're procrastinating, but I feel that there's just a lot of things um, outside of your control thrown at you left and right. And so you're going to have to, you know, stay up late a few nights to get things done. Make sure everything is packed up so that you don't have stray papers, receipts, contracts, even important documents. So that's really uh, of the utmost importance for this month. OK, um, now, in terms of your housing situation, I, I do feel a lot of family get togethers, okay? A, a more communication and contact on the family front and especially with siblings. There is going to be a cause of celebration here with siblings. So it could be, you know, engagement, marriage for those of you who, uh, who have siblings. It could also be, you know, welcoming a new family member into the home, such as a, a child. So I'm seeing a lot of celebratory good news uh, types of energy. And I feel that a sibling is going to be coming to you for those with siblings uh, will be coming to you with something in their lives that they have uh, um, successfully completed, successfully overcome. So I do see, you know, 
uh, good news coming through from uh, siblings and especially family members too. But it's more like something that is a little bit more personal, something that you hope they would have accomplished, such as graduation, such as getting married, uh, such as, you know, passing the bar exam such as getting accepted into a, a, a school that they want. So there's some good news coming through. And I feel that it's going to, you know, really solidify the, your relationship here with the, uh, the siblings um, that you grew, you grew up with. Okay. Um, now, in terms of the career front, I have here the high priestess. And I'm going back to this because um, this is the uh, one of three major arcana cards. And it lands in your career house. And... Um, this is actually a very important card. So we have here the High Priestess, um, and it indicates, you know, like uh, being privy to information, having access to a lot of information. And it's really important that you keep the information um, between, you know, whoever shared it with you, and uh, you keep, use the information wisely. So this is a big card about responsibility, okay? So I, I do feel that there's a lot of um, um, just important information flying about and I do feel that you want to make sure data especially if you're doing anything related to data entry filling forms that forms are filled out correctly data's are input um, correctly and numbers especially I'm seeing a lot of numbers uh, input incorrectly so I'm seeing like you know um, people working in the um, accounting department, human resources, and things like that. And I'm seeing you put, like, um, information in, like, social security number, street address, you know, personal information, personal data. And so make sure everything is done thoroughly. Double check, okay, because I feel like something is going to slip under the radar. And I'm seeing a lot of forms being filed, a, a lot of forms being filled in. So I feel, I feel like some of you might be... Um, might be at a loss where where everything goes you might have a lot of questions as to you know i don't know how to do this i don't know uh, what this means so i feel that you you have a lot of information to sift through overall um the ninth house traditionally it deals with higher education and what i have here is the king of swords but i do want to talk about this in terms of you know our personal um philosophies okay the ninth house deals with um I usually associate it with the crown chakra, you know, the things that we believe in on a philosophical basis, the things that we value intellectually, and especially, you know, as it relates to higher education, it can also indicate whether or not we feel sufficiently, um, we feel sufficient with our understanding, with our knowledge. And this is your card shown up here as the king of swords in the reverse position. And what it feels to me is that there might be things that intuitively, there might be things that intuitively you understand to be true. But in terms of getting people on board with what you believe to be true, you might not be in the best position to explain yourself so that they arrive at the same narrative or the same conclusion as you. So that's the major challenge that I'm seeing. It's, it's like a major point of aggravation coming through for this month where you want to, to show somebody this is the way it is, but you have some information that you need to um, keep hidden or you have some information that you can't disclose to your audience. So it's kind of uh, it's, it's frustrating when you have these limitations imposed upon you. And so, you know, uh, Geminis, you are usually very, very succinct, you know, effective and fast communicators. So I feel that it's going to require a different approach, okay? So if there is a piece of vital information you can't disclose, but you want them to see uh, things from your perspective, maybe you need to design like a, a different narrative. Maybe you need to use stories to tell the same uh, the same. Uh, narrative. Maybe you have to rely on, you know, other sources of information. Um, I do feel using like they, they they keep saying like folklores, using um, using like a, a fictional, like um, a, a parallel fictional um, story to tell the same story, and then see if people catch on and see the correlation. I feel that's going to be quite important for many of you. I'm do, I do see some uh, creative blocks coming through in terms of writing projects as well. For those of you who are in school, 
So with the King of Swords, it's basically telling you to do additional uh, research, to do a little bit more digging, to arrive at, you know, um, a, a, a whole, more holistic understanding of a situation before you form an opinion. So that means, you know, filling in all the gaps, filling in all the knowledge gaps, figuring out where the knowledge gaps are so that you can do the adequate research to fill it in for your own sake so that you have a holistic understanding of things. And I feel like for those of you who are in school, doing so, um, especially reading what other people have written, will allow you to overcome these, you know, creative or writer's blocks, okay? So that's going to allow you to, you know, uh, get your essays in on time, um, start writing for your exams, for example. So I do see um, these areas needs to be the major focus for this month. In terms of your relationship, and let me talk about the business relationship first. I feel like there's somebody um, that if you are in a business partnership, for example, you might be the person working behind the scenes and your partner might be, you know, the voice or the face of the product. And I do feel your partner's traveling quite a bit. And I do sense as well, they're traveling to uh, um, procure clients, contracts, and things like that so you might be the one waiting at home finalizing the contract signing the contracts reviewing the contracts and then pushing things through but i do feel there's going to be a lot of communication overall with uh, partners and for those of you who are dealing with romantic partners who are in a relationship right now a solid relationship partnership or even marriage what I have here is the Knight of Wands, and this is a person who is very courageous, okay? And um, I feel almost as if there might be, it, it seems to me as if there will be a lot of communication between you and the partner, and I do sense there will be a lot of ideological debates between where they're coming from and where you're coming from. and. Um, I'm sensing for many of you the, the lack of consensus, the lack of um, agreement within your relationship stems from the fact that you, they might be foreign to you or you might be foreign to them. So I'm seeing like a, a different lifestyle, different background, different, you know, um, historical approach to problem solving. And um, it doesn't indicate to me alone, this card alone in the upright position indicates that somebody who's very very courageous and they won't back down and i feel almost as if they're arguing from a moral standpoint it doesn't indicate to me conflict but i do see a lot of debates happening between you and your um, significant other and i do sense that it will lead to you know situations where you might not agree and then you might not agree with one another and then they might throw something out there that um, that you might not have all the information about and so you're going to need to do uh, you know proper research you're going to need to brush up things on your end okay um, I do sense as well you know a lot of functions um, involving family members where you will also be introducing your family members to a significant other so there's a lot of um, energies about your uh, your public image where you stand how people see you and things like that. It, it doesn't have to be bad, but I just feel that, you know, the public um, environment, I feel that, you know, the, the home, the family unit is, is kind of like your refuge, your safe haven for this month, because there will be a lot of things happening, you know, in the work front, in the friendship front as well where you're not really sure where you stand with other people. You're not really sure where you stand with friends, with group associations, with, you know, your work environment. And so your your house is where you, you go home to retreat. And I do feel because of it, um, the partner too might be retreating with you, okay? So I feel that the energy is actually very uh, transformative concerning you know the way that you communicate and the way that other people see you and the ways in which you can persuade other people on your own course of on the merits of your own course of action okay so i'm going to leave that card there and uh, transition into your love and relationship reading so 
so the the seventh house deals with you know love relationships um so with the night the knight of wands showing up in the seventh house we are going to use that as you know the the, the segue into the next part of the reading and usually when i shuffle cards out i'm going to start getting messages so just give me a second i feel that many of you need to um involve your partner um into more of your um your your public life so that can be you know um, I feel like this is the month where there might be a lot of social functions, even professional functions. And you might say that, oh, I don't know if my partner is going to like it. I, I'm going to go alone. And I feel that, you know, your partner would like to be asked. So it's really important to have a discussion about that. And um, some of you, you might have just started dating someone and you're just like, it's too soon. I don't know if it's the right thing to do to bring my partner to a work function so you're there's a lot of debates about that okay uh whether or not we are serious enough to bring each other into to um to do more public functions together so that's uh, also coming through and i'm seeing that you might be very very attracted or you know very enthralled by somebody who's outside of your usual type uh, I'm seeing a person with a very um, assertive and even aggressive energy. And I feel like they might be outside of your your usual type, like, you know, outside of your ethnic group, outside of your um, cultural, you know, linguistic, you know, ethnic uh, group. So it's somebody who's very, very exciting, very exotic. And I, I also feel like they could be... Um, just, you know, there, there's this sense of uh, attraction between you and them because of um, the, the whole concept of novelty, okay? It doesn't mean that it won't last, but I do see a, a new exciting person coming into your life, offering a different perspective, and I feel like you're getting swept off your feet. You've got some major things happening in your relationship sector here, Gemini's. Okay, so let me talk about the people that are in um, relationships first. So what I have here, for those in relationships, I have the Ace of Cups shown up in the past. So this is somebody, this is an offer that was made to you or from you to another person. And it shows up in the past, meaning this is some, a relationship that is still fairly new. I would say like within uh, six months. So I, a lot of you might have entered a new relationship within the past six months. And this is something that is still relatively new. It's um, It still requires, you know, a little bit of um, work for, for the two of you to still get to know each other. It's... Um, it's still new enough where you don't know everything about the other person. So there's still, you know, getting that, that whole getting to know you phase. But the relationship itself is a little bit more stable now. It's past that honeymoon stage, the, the first three months. So you're settled in. You're trying to get to know each other. And I have here the chariot. And the chariot is like two two very uh, disparate energies, okay? In the traditional Rider weight deck, you have the black horse and the white horse. And in this deck, the way that is depicted, uh, they're both looking at different directions and they're trying to move this chariot along in the same direction, but they're looking at different directions. So I feel that uh, there's a great energy for opposites attract in this relationship, which basically means that I feel you both are very, very different from, from each other. And I feel like on an ideological you don't agree on a lot of things. Um, so this means, you know, somebody might be very, very traditional and the other person might be very progressive. Somebody might, you know, uh, believe um, greatly in, um, in in destiny and the other person might believe greatly in free will. So I feel like on an innate level, you both are very different. And I feel that you both um, really stick to your guns when it comes to, you know, your ideologies and your philosophies. So this is a relationship where there's a lot of love there's a lot of love there's a lot of uh, respect there's a lot of communication um, there's a lot of insights to be learned from one another and it seems almost as if um, the relationship itself um, you can overcome a lot of challenges 
and um, the, the, the ways in which you both are different, it's creating a lot of chemistry, okay? It, it, it creates like a very creative energy, there's a lot of chemistry, and there's a lot of uh, attraction and passion for one another, but you might not know whether or not you both are compatible enough to really build a life together, to have a future together, to, you know, settle down into a family unit together. So I feel like that's what's happening currently for some of you who are in relationships and um, you're going through, you know, kind of like you're, you're trying to figure out what's the best way to come together as a unit, to work together. Um, at the heart of this situation, I feel many of you are grappling with some type of uh, financial concerns. So you might have met somebody that you really like and you're trying to plan a future together. And um, they might be somebody that is, you know, they don't care about money. Or they might not be financially stable or you yourself might not be financially stable. The center of the spread with the five of coins, this is a card about feeling lack. Okay, feeling like a, a sense of lack. So the person that you are involved with might be traveling a lot and you might be, you know, staying at home, missing their presence. So that is also a way in which, you know, this feeling of lack is playing out. And then for others, there might be just financial lack affecting the relationship. So they might make a lot more money than you or you might not make or you might make a lot more money than them. But I feel that the uh, they travel a lot. They have a little bit more of an extravagant lifestyle. OK, it's linked up here with the eight of wands and the eight of wands is um, a communications card. It's also a travel card. So I feel that you might not have the financial resources to come see them. If you are both kind of like at a distance from each other, then I do feel that, you know, they, they might have made the effort to come see you multiple times. And now you're trying to reciprocate, but you're also trying to save up your assets. You're trying to um, build up your financial wealth. So it's just a little bit difficult right now because financial situations are affecting your your ability to invest in this relationship crowning this reading is something that you are thinking about we have here the eight of coins which is you diligently working to balance out you know the the personal aspect in the relationship uh reciprocity they coming to see you you coming to see them um making time for one another going on dates with one another and also, um, you're trying to be realistic to not burn through, you know, like uh, your savings. And I feel that you're still diligently working a way to accumulate the wealth for yourself so that you can build a future with this person. And uh, in terms of what you're thinking about here, this is what you want. This is the person that you are thinking about. And this is like the person that you want to become as well. You want to be very financially stable. You want to own assets, land, um, you know, businesses. You want to be just uh, financially on top of the, the on top on your A game. And um, likewise, for those of you who are um, who has a partner right now, there could be a person that you're thinking about here, earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. And I feel that you, you, they're inspiring you to work really hard, to accumulate a lot of um, financial assets, to be quite successful as well. So this is a very inspiring type of a relationship where two people kind of spark off each other in a very healthy way, okay? Um, for others of you, I do sense, um, give me one second, we have the foundation here, and I have here two of wands, which is, you know, long distance relationships, so I feel like some of you are dealing with this in a long distance type of a capacity, where there needs to be a lot of trips taken, and I feel that, you know, you might have a job where you are kind of like stuck, so your mobility might be limited, and your partner is the one, their job is a little bit more flexible, so they're making more effort to come see you. And um, we have here the two of wands in the reverse. This is also considered, you know, bridging the distance. And we have as well the three of wands waiting on uh, decisions from another person, waiting on the other person to come through, waiting on promises that are made in a previous time. So I definitely feel a lot of coming together for those of you that are in long distance relationships. If you're kind of like... Um, in a relationship where you really care about each other, but you're so different from each other, down to the way you fold laundry, for example. Um, I feel that there's going to be still a lot of communication coming through. 
and a lot of you know trying to decide uh, what's what's the next step. And I feel like in this relationship, you both are very different. So it's it brings about a strong sense of competition. You know, it's sort of like, look what I can do. Oh, well, look what I can do better. So I feel like there's a friendly, competitive energy between you and the person that you're involved with. So they could be somebody that you're meeting or have met in the work environment. Or there could be, you know, somebody that you, you might be in the same profession. You might have the same, you, you might be in the same profession. You might be in sales. You might be in, you know, com, um, consulting. And you're trying to land, you know, a specific client. So I do see this, you know, very playful energy for competition between you and the person, if uh, you're a significant other, if they and you are somebody who uh, are very, very different from one another. Okay, so friendly competition, lack of compatibility, but there's a lot of excitement and there is a lot of love in this relationship. Um, moving forward. For those of you who are single, I feel like you've got your eyes on somebody. For those who are still single right now, and I'm seeing this earth sign, so Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, sun, moon, or rising, somebody who might be a property owner. They might have owned you know, their own house, their own condo, for example. They're quite successful, quite established, very sensible with money, and they give great advice, and I feel that you know they're not much of a talker, you're an air sign, so you need a lot of communication in order for you to, you know, feel connected to a, another person. But I feel the person operates um, in a different way. This person is somebody who's more like, you know, um, who is, um, who shows that he or she cares about you through their actions. So if you're wondering whether or not they like you, if they bring you, you know, little snacks, if they bring you coffee, if they go out of their way to make little gestures without a lot of talk, I feel that they do like you. Okay, so I, I feel like if this is a person you're wondering about and they're in your midst, I do feel that you can, you know, make a move here because it's safe. I feel that they're waiting for you to kind of come get them because they innately are very shy too. And they take calculated risk. Okay, so they they can't really risk, you know, making the first move, for example, in case of rejection. So I feel that um, the person does like you. Okay, this is the person you're thinking about. In terms of what's coming through for you, and this is for, you know, the third uh, group of Geminis I'm speaking to here, we do have the Tower, the Ten of Cups, as well as the Seven of Wands. And I feel like a small minority of you are going through this situation where there has been a lot of interference in the relationship. So this can definitely be um, a... I'm seeing like um, a marriage that has gone awry, that has um, involved a lot of people. There might have been other people in and out of the relationship. So you might have had an open relationship and realized it's not working. So we're going to need to part ways. You might be from a distance from a partner and you might realize that, you know, this is such a, uh, it's taking a heavy emotional toll on me. So I feel that I'm, we're better off calling it quits. And so I feel that you're going to be inundated with a lot of work. So... It seems as if you might not have the adequate time that you you can allocate for your partner and you feel like that might not be fair to them. And then likewise, there might be a third party coming into the picture here, a fire sign, so Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. Um, it's bringing about you know a lot of attraction too, so you might be rethinking your relationship. So I feel, I feel that for those of you who are separated, there is going to be... Um, you know, like a resolution coming through regarding assets, regarding child custody issues. Okay, so that's going to be coming through for those of you who are in uh, dealing with some separation or dealing with some, you know, divorce proceedings right now. All right. So Gemini's, I hope the reading has been helpful for you and it, it gives you some clarity. I wish you the best and I'll be back for the mid-month reading. Bye-bye.